All right, listen, every time I've made a video about the DaVinci Resolve Speed Editor before, people in the comments always ask if they can use it in other editing or creative software as well. And the answer is usually always the same. You can't. It's specifically made for Resolve. However, there are some panels out there that might be even better than the Speed Editor, and you can actually use them in other programs. In this one, I want to show you one of them, which is the Torbox Elite Plus. This is their newest and basically basically highest tier creative console. And I genuinely think that this thing is really cool. And it's something that could potentially be really useful for a lot of video editors out there, but also just for creators in general. Now, before we get into that, I got to get a few things out of the way first. This video is sponsored by Torbox and they did send me the panel, but I made sure to talk to them so that we're on the same page about how this is going to go. I made it very clear that by sponsoring this video, they're just paying me for my time and my effort. But I don't plan on sugarcoating anything and they can't pay me to say anything, I don't think. And I'm happy to say that the team at Torbox were completely okay with that. In fact, they specifically told me that that's exactly what they're looking for. So everything in this video are my honest thoughts about it, both about what I like as well as what I think could be better. That said, I know that a lot of people out there automatically won't trust anything that I say in this one when they know it's sponsored, which is totally fine. That's why if you're interested in this, I recommend you also check out some other videos after this one and really do your research before you decide if this is something that you actually want to pick up. Don't just blindly take my word for it or anyone else's because whether you believe me or not, I'm not trying to sell you this thing. The only reason that I'm actually showing it to you is because I actually like it. But if you think it sucks and if you think it's something that's not going to do what you need it to, then just don't worry about it and don't get it. So if you've never heard of any of the Torbox panels before, they're essentially little creative of consoles with a few programmable buttons and dials that are meant to speed up your creative workflows. They work for different things like video editing, photo editing, digital painting, 3D modeling, music production, and probably a bunch of other creative stuff that I'm forgetting as well. And also, and this is not an official intended use for it, but I even got it to work on Escape from Tarkov. So I guess technically you could even use it for gaming as well. In the Torbox software, which is where all of the customization happens, you combine functions from whatever program you're using to any of the buttons and the dials. You can set up regular shortcuts, combos, macros, or even some more advanced stuff like mouse movements or opening specific links and menus. There are a few default presets for some of the more popular creative apps, but I just deleted the ones that I didn't need and I made a few custom layouts for the tools that I actually use. Like I said, the one I got is the Elite Plus, which comes in at just under $300, but they've got a few other models at different price points. And there's a section on their website where it compares all of those. So you can go and check that out if you're interested in any of them. Now, when I first got my tour box, my impressions of it were really good. It feels really solid and it is plastic, but it's the good kind. It is durable and high quality and it doesn't pick up fingerprints easily, which is a feature that you learn to appreciate when you've dealt with enough gear that smudges the absolute second you touch it. And I have dealt with a lot of gear like that. Also, I was kind of worried that it would be really light and move around a lot while I'm using it, but it actually has a surprising amount of weight to it, which helps to keep it from sliding around on my desk. And the rubber pads on the bottom of that also help with it not sliding around. So for most setups, I don't think that movement will ever be an issue unless you actually specifically want to move it. Also, I knew that it was supposed to be small, but in person, it's even more compact than I expected. It's about a third of the size of the Resolve Speed Editor, which is great if you don't have a lot of space on your desk or if you're planning on traveling with it. And the layout is super comfortable as well. All of the buttons and the dials are positioned in a way that makes everything feel really natural to reach without having to do any weird finger gymnastics. And you can really tell that the team at Tourbox put a lot of thought into the design of this thing, which I'm guessing is why they always try to emphasize the whole thing about the ergonomics being a big part of how it improves your workflow. Plus, it honestly just feels really fun to use. Also, the setup on my PC was really quick the first time and every single time after that. You can run it with a wired connection, but you can also run it over Bluetooth and you can use it on Windows, Mac, as well as iPad. And it lets you connect it to two devices over Bluetooth at the same time. And then you can quickly switch between them using the button at the bottom that's next to the power switch. Speaking of, 
and has a power switch. And that might not sound like a big thing, but it's a big thing. The speed editor doesn't have one. And a lot of people complain that it drains the battery on it even when they're not using it because it just automatically connects. But the tour box isn't gonna do that. But just to quickly mention the battery, if you're using it with a wired connection, it doesn't rely on a battery at all. But if it's over Bluetooth, you've got two double A's at the bottom that you can swap out whenever you need to. And this is something that I had slightly mixed feelings about, but I'll talk about that a little bit later. And finally, it just looks cool. It looks unique and interesting. And with this one specifically that I got, it's got this kind of frosted shell that gives you a look at some of the internals. But one thing I want to mention is that as far as I know, as of right now, this is the only option for the Elite Plus. Maybe this is something that they're already working on, but I really do think that a few more color options would also be cool. So in terms of how I've been using it so far, I gotta be honest, I haven't really had that much time to dive super deep into absolutely everything it can do. I've been using it to edit a few of my YouTube videos, but nothing too complicated. And still, for the stuff that I have used it for, I've really been enjoying it. As of right now, I've only set up three custom presets for Resolve. One for the cut page, one for the edit page, and one for the color page. But they're all pretty simple with not much going on, just the stuff that I use the most on a regular basis. I have also been using their default Lightroom preset, but maybe that's gonna be for another video because if I have to get into that as well, this one is gonna be way too long. Now, I was originally thinking of showing you exactly how I've set up all of my presets on this thing, but then I realized that I still haven't landed on a setup that I'm 100% happy with, and I change and I tweak stuff Stuff every time I use it. So for now, I think it's a better idea to just give you a general look at what the workflow of this thing looks like. And maybe down the line, I can make another video that's a little bit more in depth about how I've actually got it set up. So in the edit page, I can use my mouse for bigger movements on the timeline, but when I wanna be a little bit more precise, I can use either the thumb wheel or the one in the middle. The thumb wheel moves the playhead by one second in either direction, and the one in the middle moves it by one frame. Then right now I've got the button on the side set up to add a cut and the thumb buttons either cut the start or the end of my clip down to my playhead. I've also got a few other functions that are set up to different keys but I'll just show the profile on screen instead of talking about everything because it is probably gonna change anyways. Either way this setup lets me go through my timeline really quickly and cut down my videos in a way that feels different and sometimes a lot easier than doing it with a regular mouse and keyboard. In the cut page it's a similar story. Again, I can use the wheels to move through my clips in my source tape or my timeline, but in here, I've got the thumb buttons set to add in and out points. Then I got a button to drop whatever I've selected to the end of the timeline. And again, I'll just show the profile on screen instead of talking about everything individually. The thing is, ever since I got the speed editor, I've been using the cut page a lot more and I've been appreciating it a lot more. So I really like that this panel also lets me keep using it without making it any slower or like worse feeling. And again, just like in the edit page, everything in the cut page feels much faster to do with this panel compared to just a mouse and a keyboard. And with the way that I've got it set up, it even feels quicker than the speed editor sometimes because there's no wasted space on the tour box for buttons that I don't use that I then have to reach across in order to reach the ones that I actually need. Finally, I got a preset for the color page. And in here, I got some of the usual stuff like adding and switching between color grading versions, adding nodes, turning them on and off. And they recently added a cool new feature to the software that's called Hover Adjust. It essentially lets you hover your mouse over any of the sliders, color wheels, number boxes, and other stuff in the color page. And then you can use the scroll wheel or the one in the middle to adjust them. Technically, this does work in other pages as well, but I'm pretty sure that it's mostly meant for the color page. Now, this is still an experimental feature at the time I'm making this video, so you don't really have a lot of settings for how it works and how sensitive it is, and it can be a little bit finicky, but it is still pretty interesting, and it kind of turns the tour box into a mini grading panel. I've personally mostly been using it whenever I'm using plugins like Dehancer or the built-in film look creator with that big screen mode, and it's actually been working pretty well. But something 
I also want to mention is that my workflow with this thing is intentionally really simple right now for a couple of reasons. Like I mentioned, I haven't had it for a long time. So I'm sure that as I use it more, I'll find more stuff that I want to bind to it here and there. But another reason is my overall philosophy with editing panels like this. The whole point of this thing is to make my workflow simpler. And with how customizable it is, I feel like for some people, it would be really easy to sit down and spend hours tweaking absolutely every single key, every key combo, adding macros, making your own custom key combinations. But I also think that if you're not careful, it can end up having the opposite effect where it overcomplicates everything instead. Like it gives you so much freedom to set it up in these crazy complicated ways. And if that's something that your workflow would benefit from, then that's a good thing. But if you're just making everything super intricate purely because the option is there, then that kind of defeats the purpose. So as of right now, I don't mind my workflow with it being very basic because it still does pretty much everything it needs to, which is giving me a more tactile and ergonomic and streamlined way to do the stuff that I would usually do with a regular keyboard and mouse. But that's also why I think this thing is so cool. With how much freedom it gives you to customize it, it can fit the needs of a huge amount of creators out there doing all sorts of things. So you can make it really simple. You can make it a little bit more complicated or you can make it be like a spaceship command center. It's up to you and what you need out of it. All right, so you can probably tell that I've had a pretty good experience with the Elite Plus so far, but like I mentioned, I am not just here to gas this thing up. So let's talk about a few things that I'm not the biggest fan of. And just to be clear, these aren't deal breakers for me, but they are things that I think are worth knowing. First off, the panel has a haptic motor that vibrates whenever you turn any of the wheels. And that's actually a nice touch because it gives you a little bit of physical feedback that adds to the feel of using it, but it also makes a clicking sound. And at first it's kind of satisfying. Like you might hear it and go, oh cool, it clicks. But then you listen to it for a couple of seconds straight. And you go, oh wait, it clicks all the time. Now, if I'm wearing headphones while I'm editing, that's not that big of a deal. But sometimes I like not having my headphones on whenever I'm doing something like pulling selects with the source tape. And in those cases, all of that clicking can get really annoying. Now you can turn it off in the software, but the switch kills the entire haptic motor, not just the sound. I'm not sure if this is the motor itself that's making the sound or if it's a, an entirely separate thing, but I would really love the option to just have the vibration without the clicking. Something else is that right now, your only options for switching presets are to either have the software do it automatically, but it's only going to change based on whatever app you're using in general and not the specific pages in that app. Or you can pick one key that's gonna be your dedicated manual preset switch. And then you gotta make sure that that key is bound to the exact same thing across every preset you create. And then you can favorite whatever presets you want that key to switch between, but it's only gonna do it in the order that you've got them in, in your list of presets. From what I've been told by the Turbox team, right now they're working on a feature where the software is gonna automatically recognize the different pages that you're using, not just in Resolve, but in other software as well. And it's automatically going to switch to a preset that you've specifically set up and linked to that page. Now, this is something that is still in development and they couldn't give me an exact time frame in terms of when it's gonna be done, but I'm really looking forward to using it because that's gonna make switching presets and pages even quicker. Also, something else I'm not a fan of, and this is gonna get a bit technical for a second, so I, I'm really sorry about that, is that whenever you build a custom preset in the Torbox software and you pick a default preset as the base for it, it always references the default keybinds for the app that you're working in. And that might not sound like a big deal at first, but the problem is if you've changed a bunch of keybinds, then what the software thinks a function does might not match what your keyboard actually does. And I know that might sound really confusing, so I'm gonna do my best to try and give you an example. So let's say that I wanna map something like start to playhead to one of the buttons. In the default Torbox preset for Resolve, that's gonna be bound to Control Shift and one of the square brackets, but on my PC, I've changed that to the number two. So if I pick the default bind for it, it's not gonna do anything and it's not gonna work. But 
if I change it to two, it's now going to work correctly, but the Toolbox software is gonna call that cut to angle two, which isn't what it actually does for me. So I have to manually go in and I have to fix the label. And if I create another preset, I can't use my own custom layout as the base for it. I can only use one of the default ones. So I have to do that same process all over again, which is not a big deal for one or two functions, but when you've customized a bunch of different shortcuts like I have in Resolve, it becomes really time consuming. So it would be amazing if the software could actually reference my personal keybinds. Like if I could export my shortcuts from Resolve and then import them into Torbox so that the labels and the functions match up, or better yet, if the software could just read them automatically, that would make setting things up much quicker. And also one more minor thing, I kind of wish that the dials had a little bit more resistance to them because most of the time they're fine, but I occasionally find myself barely touching the one in the middle specifically whenever I'm reaching for one of the other keys and that shifts my playhead just enough to mess something up. Now with all that said, none of these are deal breakers for me and there are a bunch of great things that more than make up for them. So like I already mentioned, this thing is crazy customizable. You can set it up to be very simple like I have or super complicated. You can stick to the default presets or make your own. And I genuinely feel like whichever way you go with, it can always end up making your workflow at least a little quicker and smoother. Also, it feels like there's no wasted space. The panel is small, but the layout is great. One of my biggest complaints with the speed editor was that I never used the number buttons in the middle of the panel, but there's no option to bind them to anything else. So it's just a bunch of wasted area, but with the Elite Plus, that is not the case at all. And something that kind of helps with that is how good the layout is on the software itself. It looks a little bit overwhelming at first, but then when you sit there and you look at it for a few seconds, it just all makes sense. The default single keys, the combos, the option to make your own combinations, it all just works really easily. You open up the software, you hit a key or a combo, and it takes you to the line that corresponds to it and you can set it up however you need. And a really cool feature of the software is that you've got the option to turn on these on-screen elements that kind of show you what functions different keys on your panel are mapped to. You can control the opacity of them, the position, and you can even make it so they only show up whenever you hover your mouse over them, but they stay hidden the rest of the time so that they don't clutter your screen. And I think that this is insanely useful while you're still getting used to the whole workflow with the tour box and you're trying to build up that muscle memory for what different keys do. But beyond that, the software just has a lot of different helpful tooltips and guides that make understanding how it works a lot easier than you might think it is at first glance. And something I mentioned earlier were the batteries. Now, I was on the fence about this because on one hand, I really appreciate gear that lets you replace the battery if it ever breaks instead of having to replace the entire thing. There is already enough e-waste out there in the world and I prefer not adding any more to it if I can avoid it. But on the other hand, I'm not a huge fan of the idea of always having to have double A's lying around. Considering that this is a premium product and the price tag on it is a little bit on the higher end, I think it would have been cool to have something like a removable battery, kind of like the ones on cameras that you can still take out, but just charge it with like a USB-C cable. That said, it's not the end of the world and you can easily just pick up a pack of rechargeable double A's. Like I got ones from Ikea that I'll probably use with this. So that's why I'm still fine with leaving the removable batteries in with the list of good things, because ultimately I do think that it was the right move. So as of right now, I really like this thing. And if I gotta be honest, I do think that it's gonna be replacing the speed editor in my projects. Just to be clear, I still think that the speed editor is great for the right workflow. And if you've got one and it's been doing what you needed to, then that's all that matters. Don't throw it out and go and buy this one. But after messing around with the tour box, even for a short time, there is no way that I can't point out just how much more versatile it feels. And I think that's the biggest thing that would make it the right move for a lot of creators out there looking for this sort of creative console, not just for Resolve editors. And in the past, whenever I saw anything about Toolbox panels, I thought that it was just hype, but after testing it out, I get it now. So this is something that I've been using a lot lately, and I definitely see myself using it long-term. And 
I'm not gonna make any promises, but maybe down the line when I've had the chance to use it for longer, I might try to make another video with my long-term thoughts on it. So if that's something that you wanna see, drop a comment and let me know. But yeah, feel free to drop any questions that you've got about this thing down below and I'll do my best to try and answer. But that's about it for this one and I will see you in the next one.